And once again this week, I am still taking a quick break from doing Reference Wednesdays. However, in today's video, you get to watch a little bit of the critique sessions that I have with the class. For more information on the course, check out the link in the description. All right, enjoy. Um, real quick, let's talk about proportion because uh, it, you know, this looks good. Uh, these all look good, but I think, I don't know if the reference was this way, but the this jaw area is way too low compared to where the, the cranium is. I think, let me just double check. Yeah, I think the cranium is supposed to intersect about right here. So all you gotta do is just uh, make this line a little bit lower, um, just so it feels like the the uh, cervical vertebrae can sit there where they need to be. So the, the vertebrae kind of make up your neck and they sit right there and they don't go that high. They kind of sit right into the bottom of the cranium there. So that'd be my only critique regarding proportion for now. Uh, although I think overall the, you know, the, the lower jaw here could be smaller, um, maybe kind of fitting in like this, which puts the teeth right there. But let's talk about the painting um, and the form. And, and I think it's the same issue as, as the previous critique. I think, um, I, I, you know, the center one has a really strong read in terms of the form and it, the craniums are doing a pretty good job too. But I wanna push that. I kinda of want to, again, isolate those value changes. So let's set that to multiply this time. And so, <clears throat> I'm only gonna, you know, let's just do a quick example of a sphere over here to be our kind of uh, indicator of value. Oh, no, I want something brighter. So I'm not gonna go too bright with the midtones here, but I will, why does it do that? It's so annoying. Uh, go pretty bright with the highlight there and then make sure the core shadow helps us read both um, the highlight side and the, the, the uh, shadow side. So over here, I'm just gonna go through and uh, erase out on this layer and make sure the value groups feel a little bit more isolated. And really you can do that pretty effectively by crunching those values like that. So if we turn it off, um, it, also the background is a bit bright, so it's blending with the the skull there but you know in the same way even though it's a different lighting scenario that this core shadow separates the, the light group from the value group i i want that to happen here too so the value group uh, of the of the shadow and the value group of the lights are feeling separate here and this is a very much this is very much a painterly way of thinking about it but if you turn it off the value groups are there but they're not as distinct because like you know the the there's a bit of a jump in value here and i don't know maybe, maybe the background is also throwing me off as well so you know just keep that in mind probably do something like that for that one and when in doubt like use a layer like this to kind of push the form to read more three-dimensionally because what I just did there is, is, well, I crunched the values, but even though the form is reading really well here, I, I'm trying to find ways to push that uh, illusion, and, and that's going to be helping your paintings overall. Yeah, I can see a difference already. Yeah. Did you just add a multiply layer and then put it as gray? Exactly. And then paint. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm using a, I'm using a, a mask on it, but it, if you don't have a mask on it, let's say you're using a different program, you could just make the multiply layer and then erase out with an airbrush or whatever you want. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And this is a also like a, a tip for anything you're doing for paintings. Like, you know, when, when form isn't reading, make a multiply layer, isolate those value groups. Oh, uh, something as I was doing these, I was, pretty content with them like i was saying I, i've never been able to manipulate color like this like mm. some stuff clicked and and i was able to 
I just have never had that level of freedom with color. So it was, it felt really nice, which is why I think I spent so much time doing these. <laughs> Great. But uh, at the same time, I was thinking these are kind of going in a, a direction I feel good about. But if, if someone were to tell me, like, bring these to a finish, mm. either for like an illustration or or something else, I would be really I feel like I would mess them up. Like, I feel like anything further than what I have here would just be noodling it, and I wouldn't know how to finish it. Good question. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, and that would, I guess, same question would apply to all this. Uh, oh, that, yeah. That line is great, that last one. I actually have a question about that one, and it was, why in the world is it so much more appealing than the rest of them? Yeah, uh, I flipped the temperature relationship, so it's cool light, warm shadow, and I feel like that has something to do with it. But something about that really worked a lot better than, especially the first one. Uh, yeah, well, I think, and I'll answer your earlier question too uh, after this one. But it, mostly, the one, two, three, three read is really strong, and actually, I don't read that as a shadow. I read that as bounce light, and I think that really shows the dimensionality of the of the lime there. And so this to me looks like it was straight out of a, uh, a viz dev thing for Pixar, right? Whereas this one is like, okay, first week student at, you know, fine arts college. So do more experimentation like that. Um, okay. And I think this fifth one is also doing that. And, but, but the strongest thing, cause like we could even take that. Uh, once it loads. It's weird. I'm using a 3090 and it's still kind of laggy. Uh, like if you look at it in black and white, it, it also has the strongest value read. And, and you know, the and, the and the way you handle the sharp edges here, 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 there, and everything else is blurry. It's you're, you're telling the viewer all the information they need. Whereas up here, you're starting to do that, but it's it's, it's not as controlled and curated as this over here. Uh, but also, yeah, like that, um, that one to three. Now we can get that effect up here if we, if my color picker works. Yeah, we'll pretend I picked the right color. But uh, just looking at the value by doing this, it starts to meet this one in the same realm. Whereas the value reads on the rest of them are are going a bit blandly from value uh, high value to low value. But here, I think it's a it's a more elegant and and um, I guess harmonious dance. Of values and I think that's why but uh, let's go back to that first question uh, so you know taking it to a finish and I, I have a pretty straightforward answer to that so at least how I would consider it uh, so you know when you did these how, how zoomed in were you if you could remember let's move this over here. um I what I think I stayed right around where you are currently, right. right here for most of the time. Okay, right. So um, when you're zoomed out at this, I guess, uh, percentage, what is it, 50% or something, uh, you can kind of see the whole thing. And you're working at brush strokes that are you know pretty big, right? And for you, proportionally, those brush strokes are taking up that much of the screen. So finishing to me if i was to take it further i'd zoom in just enough so that when i'm using the like uh the brush it's also the similar ratio so i'm always going to keep pretending like it's just a quick painting so that it's basically one quick painting and a bunch of other quick paintings inside it and a bunch of other quick paintings inside it where they need to be i rarely go in and and, and go to this um zoom and like do like this kind of like very careful, slow, whatever. It's it's always like macro to eventually micro. And if you do it this way, where you're just you know occasionally zooming in, uh, you'll, you'll find yourself like at two hundred percent, and so on and so forth. Uh, you you can kind of make better decisions of what actually needs to be rendered, right? Uh, and you don't want to do that treatment like over here, right? You only do this. Uh, where the, the client will actually see information, right? Now, if the client says, hey, no, 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 we need a photo real thing, then you say, all right, I quit. I'm going to do a better job. Exactly. 
<laughs> you know, because if we look at, I'm just kidding. If you want to do that, that's great. Um, but if you look at something like this, let's let's test this theory. Uh, it, just just zoomed out. Let's just circle the areas that have detail. So we have this. We have a little bit of detail there. Some here, a little bit there. It kind of gets um, detailed here, there, some there. Um, and we zoom in, yeah, there's information there. But as we go to here, like this is like done in like maybe a minute, two minutes, right? Because you've done those brush strokes before with the Apple, same thing here. But, you know, if the client saw the house in that same way, like to this degree, it'd be too loose. There's not enough information. Like you have to pass this off to a 3D modeler or something. So that, that whole zoom in thing where I said, you, you go in gradually, zoom in, go in gradually, zoom in. It's going to happen in the important areas. And so that's how you think about it. Um, and as you do that, you're, you're going to come across other obstacles. And when you get there, then we can kind of figure out what the answers are. But at the very least, that's how to start. Yeah, that's actually that's a very helpful way for me to think about it, kind of system systematically like that. That's yeah. Very, yeah, I think that'll be very useful. Yeah, otherwise you're overwhelmed with like, okay, got to finish the whole thing, you know? What was the problem with this? Um, I think um, I was trying to go for like a strong one, two, three read, but I was kind of having trouble with that with the cylinder. Um, it, it just doesn't look right to me. Okay. So I, I, I think they look good, right? But you know, regarding the one, two, three read, the thing to test is you know, make it black and white. And if you can make it work in black and white, it should be fine. And and so here's another thing to consider. Um, and you know, I, I've seen you be able to do a one, two, three read on a cube. So let's do that real quick, where we have a cube. And let's just borrow this value so that we're working within that range. Okay, so if we take that quick way to uh, quickly go halfway to black, something like this. And this one's going to be quarter way to black, just to get that effect. Right, so now we can argue that, yeah, that's a one, two, three read. When we zoom out, it works, right? So how does that apply to this? So if we look at this as a cylinder, it might be confusing, but if you just look at a low poly version of this, this side is a, uh, I think we're getting some static. Who is that? How dare you? Gods, remove him. Her, whoever. Anyway, uh, so that, that's essentially a polygon. Here's a polygon. And up here is another polygon. That's, that's the cube, right? So this value should be the same as that value. And then same thing with this. This value should be same as that value. And you know we already started with that, so that's fine. And so you just have to adjust accordingly. And let's go ahead and test that. So if we just grab this, oh, that's not it. It's much brighter. So we can have it roll away into this value, which is actually pretty close to what you have. And you can kind of make a core shadow there. Now it has that one, two, three read. So you know when in doubt, do the low poly version and see what happens. You could even, um, sorry. Oh, I just said okay. Okay, yeah. And you could even add a bevel reflection like that, and automatically it just, it just works. Uh, so having said that, you could do the same thing here. Uh, when I look at it in black and white, it's like this whole bottom area feels like it's the same value. Uh, well, it's it's just too close in value. So I'm going to make a brighter version of everything. And so that just looks like this on a separate layer. And go ahead and put a mask on it so it goes away. But let's go back to black and white and push that. So I'm, I'm squinting. Right now it all looks like it's one big value group. I'm going to do that until it's not. Now I think it's too bright, so I'm going to do it again, but lighter. Maybe even make the top side brighter. All right. Now we're going into the range of the one, two, three read. So you know, when in doubt, low poly uh, until it until it has a distinct read. Also, the other thing that's working against you is the um, 
the background value is mixing with the, the highlight value. So you might as well make the background darker to let your uh, shadow side stand out. And now it already looks more realistic. So questions on that? Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Thank you. Yep.